crazy day. So I told Chris he didn't have an excuse because he lives within walking distance. So no snow day. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, a little willing to still come in. Uh, the Chris DeBacher, he's with the Free Methodist Foundation, which is right down the street. He does a lot of work with churches and helping think through financial planning for their congregates, but also does some uh, financial planning on the side as well. You may recognize his daughter, Crystal Lee, who is missing this semester because she's enjoying the South and the land of Disney. But um, so this is her dad. So he's an alum as well from. I'll let him tell the story. Yeah, a million years <laughs> but ago. he's a great advocate and he's been very willing to come in and help train and teach us in these areas of budgeting. So if you'd welcome Chris, we'll get started. Just a quick reminder, the little green sheet helps us know that you're here, but also gives us some feedback about the session. So if you'd complete that for us and we'll get one. Thank you. This is a good day, isn't it? I mean, you get to come here, you get to be out of the snow, and you leave here hopefully with a little nugget of information, but you leave here with some easy math. I mean, so you got dinner covered tonight. Doesn't get much better as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this is like gold. So um, the goal here today for me, um, and you guys all are voluntarily here, I think for the most part. Hopefully nobody's twisting your arm to be here. So my half twisted? Some of you are half twisted to be here? They chose okay. to be in class. <laughs> I'm hopeful that during the time we have here today that, that there's going to be a lot of stuff that I want to share. I hope you can take one thing, one, just one little nugget that you might be able to apply to what you're doing today or apply it to the near future. Because um, I think when you, when you come to something like this and you volunteer, your time, you can just kind of go through the motions and sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed with a lot of stuff, but if you just kind of focus in on one thing, um, that, that's what I'd encourage you to do, because I think that can be the most effective way to use this time. So um, look for that, look for that thing. Um, and, and the goal I was just sharing with these two young ladies, uh, I think the goal with college ultimately is not to have this be the, um, you know, this isn't, the goal is to get rid of this as soon as possible. This works while you're in college and it's a good quick fix, but there is life after this. And if you do some planning now and you set yourself up now so you can um, uh, ultimately um, maybe live a little bit better life than, than Easy Mac or ramen noodles or whatever it might be. And we're gonna talk about just some real basic things to get you get you going down that track. And I think we're, we're a small enough group here. If you guys have, you know, if I go a certain place that doesn't feel um, you know, where it's going to be helpful for you. If you've got a question or a thought, let's, I'd, I'd rather get whatever you, is on your mind if you've got something there before I just share what I've got to share. So promise me if you want to do that, just raise a hand or just yell something out and we'll go whatever direction you want to go here. Um, like Mr. Melton said, I'm a graduate. It seems like a million years ago I graduated here in 1995. And I've got a daughter now who's a sophomore, and it just it, it, it blows by in a hurry. And the reason I say that is I wish I wish I could go back in some ways to where where you guys were outside of the Easy Mac. I wish I could go back and do things a little bit different to set myself up um, even different from where I'm at today. Because little things that you can do today make a huge, huge impactful difference later on in life. Um, so we're going to go through some of those things. So again, look for that one little, that one little nugget that hopefully will help set you off in a, uh, a direction that's better than where a lot of your peers may be. And I think that's the thing too, real quick. You're a very small representation of the SAU community here. And I think just by you being here indicates that you're wanting to be maybe a little bit different than everybody else. Because a lot of, a lot of students, say they want to start in a good direction and want to do this and you know want to be successful but the reality the sad reality really is most people aren't going to do the things that it takes to to be successful i mean they're real basic little things but most people are going to say i want to do it but they simply don't and if you're one of the minority or if you're in the minority of people that do it you're going to be able dave ramsey you guys, anybody know dave ramsey right christian financial guy nationally known guy he says if you're willing to live right now live like no one else later in life you'll be able to live like no one else right so if you're doing things today you're sacrificing a little bit today later on in life you're going to be able to live like like nobody else okay so ultimately that's where we're going so um 
you can turn on the TV, the radio, go online, whatever it might be, and anybody who has a platform to reach you will give you financial advice. And most people, you know, think they're experts, but the reality here is you can't get any much more of an authority on financial stuff than the Bible. The Bible has over 2,300 verses that deal with money and finances, and I would love to share each one of those verses. And wouldn't you guys love to know each one of those verses? There we go. Okay. Well, at least there was one honest guy saying no, no. But here's the reality: if you if you look at financial decisions, anything that you would have to make, any decision that you have to make in life, if you look at it through the context of what Scripture shares, it should make that decision a little bit easier. And if there's there's some very spiritual reasons why, uh, or some spiritual verses, some spiritual applications, but there's some really practical stuff there too. If you just dig into it a little bit. So the, the, the hope here is that you'll use, use scripture as the basis for financial decisions and it should make those decisions a little bit easier because everything we have is the Lord's, what he's given you here, your mind, your bodies, your education, your heritage, your hopefully your job someday, the financial resources that come from that are all, are all his. And if you're able to make decisions through the lens of, of what the Lord's telling you to do, uh, again, it's gonna set you off in a, in a, right, in a right direction. And we're gonna refer to a couple couple verses here as we go through, but not all 2,300, all right? Rest assured. All right, I think this is a good one, and, and I kind of just shared this, but if you're going to start with a building block, a building block scripture that's going to guide you through the rest of life, can you guys see am I probably right in your way? First Chronicles 29.11, and that sets the sets the tone for everything that you should do. Everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O oh Lord. This is your kingdom. We adore you as being in control of everything. It's all the Lord's. No matter what it is, how little, how much, no matter how shiny it is, um, it, it's all the Lord's. And it's meant for, for his glory, for his benefit. And he's, he's given you that. So again, look at, look at your stuff and the decisions you have to make through that. And it should, it should make the road a little bit clearer on whether I do this or should I do that. That should really be the thing that projects you uh, in the right in the right direction. Um, this is something that I show um, every person that I meet with individually. Any person who comes to me and says, "Chris, I want to do this," or "I have a goal of retiring at this age," or "I have a goal of saving so much money to get me to this goal." Okay, if I were to sit with your parents and they say, "I want to send my daughter to Spring Arbor University." How do I get started? I need to save some money to, to do that. I would show them this. This is our starting point. And I don't want to get too much into this, but the, the, the thing that you really have to do, and I'll show you on the next slide this, um, you have to start with a plan. A lot of people, especially like today, you guys know the market has been just, largely it's been fantastic. If you just have some money and you know somebody who can help you invest those dollars over the last couple months, you could pretty much close your eyes, pick an investment, and you would have made a tremendous amount of money in the market. It doesn't take a whole lot of expertise at this point. But long term, long term, what's going to separate a person like that from somebody who has long term financial success is, is right here on this bottom level. The only reason I show you this is because I tell people you need to have you need to have a financial plan in place. You need to have a giving plan. You need to have an estate plan. You need to have a budget, which is really a plan for how you're going to spend the money that you're receiving from your employer or from the business that you have. All four, these four things have one thing in common, and that it's, it's a plan. You're not, your plan really dictates what, what, you should, what you should do, the decisions that you should make. You should follow your plan. Okay, and I don't want to spend much more time on this, but here's another Dave Ramseyism. And, and you guys are, you're, you're adults, you're adults, even though you may not feel like making adult decisions sometime, I think by you being here in college, you're, you're adults. And here's, I think, a fantastic, um, fantastic definition of what makes, what separates a child from an adult. It's not an age. I think it's this right here. One definition of maturity is learning to delay pleasure. Children do what feels good. Adults devise a plan and follow it. Okay? And if you go, you know, you go into an elementary school or even high school for that matter, it's all about me. It's all about what I can get today, right now, and 
what, how happy can I be today, right? And adults are, are you're, you're a little bit beyond that. You know, I might be sacrificing, and again, going back to what I just said, if you're willing to live differently today and delay some of that gratification, delay some of that, I want it right now and what feels good right now, um, and follow a plan, you're gonna be completely different. And this sounds so basic, right? It sounds so, so basic, but if you're able to do that, uh, again, most people, most people aren't. Most people, when they get out of college, right? How many of you are seniors? Do we have any seniors here? Yeah. What's one of the things you hope that happens after <coughs> college? Well, find a great job. Find a job? To, to what, for what purpose? To ultimately? Fulfill a dream. Fulfill a dream, that's good. I like that's pretty good. What what is your any any other thoughts? Kind of the same things like have a consistent like career. Yeah, I like that. Here here's what I'm going. You guys are good. You, you're you guys are good. A lot of people would say I want to graduate. I want to get a job because I want to buy the car. I gotta have. I've driven this piece of junk for you know since I was 16 years old and I've never had a nice car. I want to have the car. And I want to live in a house that, you know, I mean, it's a nice house. I've worked, I've worked really hard and I've got to have the house and I've got to have, I want to start taking trips and I want to start doing stuff that, that maybe I didn't do growing up. You know, I want to kind of live, and I'm not, that, that's not what you were saying here, but some people say that's, that's the dream. I want to do that, right? Um, but an adult will say, here's, here's my ultimate, here's the outcome. Here's what I want to have. I define what the things I want to have happen and then I devise a plan and I follow that. And I'm not distracted by the shiny thing that comes through. You know, kids are, whatever they see the shiny thing, they're going, oh, I like that, I like that. And it completely distracts them from what was really, should be important. So if you, I think you start with your priorities, you start with your goals, you devise a plan to get there, and you, you follow it, you follow it, you follow it. And most people, I would venture to say, are gonna be distracted by that and are gonna follow, follow that plan. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit more here. I wanted to share with you a few things that I've seen as some mistakes that uh, college kids will make or after graduation, some of the things that are, are some pitfalls and hopefully you can avoid some of these. Um, number one, credit card debt, consumer debt. Okay, that's probably the biggest, biggest pitfall you could, you could, you could uh, fall into. Uh, it's, I don't know, you guys, if, if you're like my daughter, it seems like she's getting stuff at home. They come to our address all the time. She's getting credit card offers. Banks are soliciting you guys like crazy, and they want to make it look attractive for you to get a credit card. And once you've got another, once you've got a credit card, they're going to say, let's get, let's get this person another one. And they want you. The marketing is brilliant. They're genius in what they do. They want you to get multiple cards, and they want you to live the dream right now. They're saying, don't, you don't need, in essence, you don't need to plan, you don't need to save, you don't need to do things right. You can have it now, apply it for our credit card and you can live the dream now. You don't need to delay, right? You don't need to be an adult and delay what satisfaction you, 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 uh, would come from that. You can have it now, right? And that's, that's the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they think, you know what, I do deserve it and I do deserve you know, I've been working hard this semester and I'm so tired of snow falling. I deserve a trip somewhere. I deserve to go on a cruise and I, I might not have the money, but my friends and I, we do, you know, we're seniors, we're, we're not going to see each other again. We deserve this and, you know, you borrow to do that. It's probably one of the biggest mistakes you can make. And this may be far from where you guys are, but I, I've used this for a lot of, a lot of presentations. So you, you can fill in whatever that thing is that you think you deserve right now okay but if you borrow i know a dining set is high on a lot of your list but go with me here okay whatever it is that is your your thing that you don't have the funds to buy right now but you want right i mean that's part of your part of your goal okay and you're saying i can't live without it i need to have it today okay so you borrow four thousand dollars to buy this fantastic beautiful furniture set to have in your home because when your parents come you want them to see that you've made it and you've done it and you're you're living life you're living the dream and most furniture you do you do that through the furniture store and they they're they're awesome at doing this they'll say buy this today 
you know, 0% financing for, for two years. You don't have to pay a thing for two years. And again, they're selling you on this idea that you can have it now and worry about paying for it later. And sure enough, later comes sooner than you'd expect. And so ultimately, they're gonna sell you, they're gonna sell you this furniture and they're gonna loan you this money at crazy, crazy percents, 24% I use in this scenario. And they're gonna say, now you just have to pay $211 a month. And you guys probably know a lot of this, this concept anyway. You get it paid off in two years and you think, well, that's a pretty good deal. I can make $200 a month payments. And ultimately that, that purchase cost you $5,000, but you had it now. And it, ju it just doesn't make sense. Why pay more for it if you can delay that gratification? Boy, you can, you're going you're gonna to save a, a ridiculous amount of money. And here's, an, uh, here's another example. If you save the same $211 per month, so you start with your budget, you know, you've got, your, you've got some income coming in. Now you just simply start saving that money. You don't have that thing, whatever it is, yet to enjoy, but you're delaying that. I'm saving $211 a month. In only 18 months, I've got the funds needed to buy that thing, and I'm paying cash. And I don't know if any of you have had this experience. Cash is so powerful. It's so powerful. If you can take out $1,800 or four, whatever it is, say it's at $4,000, you pull out $4,000 of cash and you show it to the retailer or you show it to the guy selling you the car or whoever it might be, it's amazing what kind of a deal you can oftentimes come up with, right? When you have cash and you've got $100 bills that you're saying, I've got it here, I'm ready to go, but I need you to do something for me. I need you to discount this by two or three hundred dollars. It's amazing the bargaining power that you have when you have cash. And so ultimately you're saving even more. But again, most people, most people aren't disciplined to do this. Most people aren't disciplined to have a plan and to delay that gratification and to start saving that way because they want to have it right now. Okay, everybody with me so far? Seems so so basic, right? Another example, if you want to have $4,600, I don't know where we came up with $4,600. Say $4,600 for, uh, for a car by putting $464 a month in a cookie jar. Again, this is a, a huge, a huge, huge money maker for car dealerships. Um, you know, they're going to sell you on the idea that you can afford, because you've got this income, that you can afford this much per month, and they're going to try to get you into a car that's probably something more expensive than you really should have, but sell you on the idea that you can afford the monthly payment, okay? And if you're able, to, again, to delay that, I know you need some, you need wheels, you need wheels to get around, but the whole idea here is if you can, if you can suffer through so you have that, those dollars set aside, boy, you, without having a car payment, it's incredible. It's incredible how much more freedom and flexibility you have with, with the dollars that you're given. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. So far, so good. Um, I'm going to go. I, I, I'm going to go right back here before I get into this. There's one story that I think is awesome. I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. And he tells this story um, about uh, a young couple, and the numbers they always—it's kind of like a fish story here. You know how after you, I, I forget the exact story, but I'm going to give you the idea here. Mm -hmm. um, talk to a couple who wanted to live like no one else. They wanted to be different. So this couple, they were in love right after college. They got married, and they're living the dream here. And they both got, um, I, I think it was teaching jobs, right? They both got teaching jobs. They were fortunate to each get a job. And they weren't making a huge amount of money, but for them it was like, you know, I mean, we're not eating, we're not eating Easy Mac here anymore. But they committed that they wanted to be different than friends. So their friends all got jobs and they all bought the homes and they all bought the cars and had this had this perception that they were really doing things right this couple decided to live i think it was above somebody's garage so i think they said it was somebody from from their church they got married and they said can we we're, we're kind of just we've got some goals here and we're looking for some affordable housing and i think he said they didn't have to pay anything this couple from their church just let them live up above their garage um, and I think it was for a period, uh, it was something crazy. It was like three years, right? So can you imagine being married and deciding, you know, if, as a husband, I'm saying, okay, I have my wife here. We're going to go, we're going to go live above 
this person's garage. You know, it's just not the ideal dream, but they, they, they together bought into this and they, they ended up uh, virtually saving everything, everything that they made. And they lived, I, I wouldn't doubt if they lived on Easy Mac for three years. I mean, they were really committed and they ended up saving somewhere in the ballpark of $150,000 over three years because they were just completely committed. They had their eyes on the on a prize here. And again, I, I can't imagine probably the looks and the whispers that some of their friends gave them. You know, just, did you see what they're doing? They're living in the garage here. I mean, what are, what are they doing here? <laughs> Ultimately ended up saving $150,000 cash. And they ended up, or maybe it was, actually I take that back. I think it was 200,000 cash. And they ended up buying a home at that time, when they had that cash saved up, they ended up buying a home for 150,000 cash, and then they took the extra $50,000 and furnished it, brand new furniture. And I mean, you talk about a dream. Now all of a sudden, they're living in a home that most of their friends can only dream about having, and they have brand new furniture, and they have no mortgage payment, no payments whatsoever, because they did it right, because they were willing to delay that satisfaction right away, and really live Live like no one else because they had they had a plan. So it's totally possible. Now, how many how many people are willing to do that? Virtually none. Virtually none. Most people are going to say we want to have it now. But if you're willing to do something like that, and that may be a little extreme, but it, 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 if you're willing to do it, it's amazing how again you can you can be so much further ahead. Okay. All right. I'm going to zoom on here. Any questions? Everybody good? We're going down a good. Good road here so far? All right. Is there such a thing as good debt? Anybody have a thought on that? Somebody's got to have a thought. I'm going to say no. No, there's no such thing as good debt. All right. You got a 50 50 chance, right? It's got to be <laughs> yes or no. Right? I like that. Thank you. We're gonna have, do you have something? Could a little bit of debt be good if it's for the purpose of building up your insurance or your. Um, Credit card rating could be. That's a good. That's a good thought. I'm going to give you. I I would say uh, yes, and I would also say yes, yes to you in some ways. If you can get through, if you can get through life without debt, man, that's awesome. And if your parents, and I'm not going to put it all on your parents, if your parents did a fantastic job of saving, um, they may have been able to pay cash for your tuition bill here. I would venture to say, and I won't put anybody on the spot, I would venture to say that there aren't very many of you who have gone through SAU here without incurring some kind of debt or having some, you know, or having to fill that with some, in some other way, right? But you can certainly do it. If you can get through life without it, great. I would tell you, if you have to get through, if you have to have some debt, there are some debt that is, it's certainly, I don't know, good. I guess good is in apostrophe or whatever that is acceptable. quotations right. what's that acceptable debt except there you go okay and i'm just giving you my thoughts on this i would tell you any anybody maybe for an extra easy mac and cheese can somebody tell me i don't know where the extra easy mac and cheese is going to come from but um what do all these things have in common student loans and don't just say they're good debt student loans <laughs> home, home mortgage or a new business. What do those three things have in common? I'm just gonna, I'll do cartwheels up here if somebody says this. Yeah? Is it an investment more like your future, sort of like your student loans, like you're investing in education, so it's gonna pay off in the future, your home mortgage, like you're getting a home, a new business, you're investing in that business so that it can grow? You know what? I can't do cartwheels. <laughs> Close your eyes and imagine me doing backflips. You're exactly right. Yeah. These things, I would tell you, that, that's awesome. Thank you. They're appreciating. They're appreciating assets. So you're, oftentimes, if you, if you can't, without your education, without your degree from Spring Arbor University, you're not able to get the position that you are hoping to have. You're not able to start the career that you, that you want to have. Right, so it's necessary. Um, if you any anybody in pre med, any, anybody going to the medical world? Okay, I have a, um, my. I'm not. I don't think I'm talking out of school here. My um, niece's husband. They both graduated from Spring Arbor here a few years ago. He is in um, 
he, I think he just graduated from, I don't even know where he was. You know, he's, in, he's in the physical therapy world. And he shared with me recently now, he came through Spring Arbor in pretty good shape. He now has uh, just over $120,000 of student loans, which he said just completely overwhelms me. But we looked at that a little bit, and I said, you know, without you taking on that loan, you're not going to be able to get this position as a physical therapist. It's just, it's just not possible. And so he's going to have the income soon to be able to replace, or you know, be able to repay those loans. So I told him in that way, it feels, it's, it's an okay thing. It's an okay thing. You don't see very many doctors that go through med school and all of the stuff that they need to go through without incurring some debt. But without that, you can't, you're not going to be able to get that career. Okay, so in some ways, like you said, that's, it, that's allowing you to advance. Okay, a home mortgage, um, if you can buy it, like we just use that example. I think ideally if you can save enough cash to buy a home, awesome, awesome. But if you have to have debt on a property like that, that's generally an appreciating asset. So when you buy a home, most homes and most neighborhoods are going to appreciate each year, right? So the value of that home is gonna get, it's gonna get a little bit higher each year, right? So you're buying, you're buying an asset that is, that is appreciating, like an investment. And a new business is the same way. Oftentimes it's hard to start a business without having some kind of debt, but that business is gonna be one that generates, generates income in the future. What you don't see on here is a vacation, you don't see a car, you don't see a whatever, whatever, I can't think of another example. Because those things are, you know, once you, once you borrow money to go on a vacation, all you have left at the end of that vacation are some good memories and some pictures. You don't have anything that's really growing in value. Okay, a car, the second you drive the car off a lot, it depreciates in value. It's not worth as much as what you bought it for. So if you have to have some debt, these things are, I would go, maybe I should use those words. It, it's acceptable, it's acceptable debt. Okay, this is a small thing, but it's a thing that you can control. It's a controllable, and um, I would do this if I were you. I think this is a good thing. And kind of to your point back here, um, <laughs> your credit report is important. Um, you can ruin your credit score, even if you do something dumb, um, you know, like not just, even if it's a small bill, you've got a phone bill or a, whatever it is that you might have that you're responsible for, if you just ignore that bill, it seems pretty inconsequential right now, but later in life, a decision that you made today can make a huge decision if you do have to borrow money to get a mortgage or for whatever it might be, even student loans for that matter. Um, so make sure you're, if, you, if you've got a bill, if you've got stuff that you're responsible for, make the payments. Make the payments, make the payments. But you have to know that almost 80% of credit reports contain some kind of a mistake, something that's just not accurate, that doesn't reflect who you really are and what your financial, your past financial history really is. So the majority of your credit reports contain some kind of mistake, and 25% of those are a mistake that's big enough that it will cause you from getting the dollars that you need. So you can, if you just take some initiative, every year check your credit report. And there are so many sites out there that want, and I should know this, right? I think freecreditreport.com is one that allows you to every year check your credit report. And it's, it allows you to see, it's kind of like a mirror, it allows you to see what a bank sees when they look at you. Allows that allows you to see what they see when they look at you, and they're just looking at your financial history. You're on, in black and white, and they'll uh, you'll see exactly what you've spent money on and what how uh, current you were with your payments, and if you were delinquent in any way. And if you see something on there that's just not right, maybe your name just got confused with somebody else's, or just something bad got in there, you can you can take the opportunity to correct it now, and it'll make a huge difference later on. And again, there's no cost to do it; it just takes a little bit of time to make that happen, or to make that happen. Um, oops. Um, this, is, this is a biggie right here. Number, number three, the lack of, lack of budgeting. And I, I'm not really gonna get into a real deep discussion on budgeting, but here, here would be the thing, if my daughter were sitting here, and she's heard this so much, and I would hope you would take this away, and I think if you grew up in the church, you probably would have heard this in some way, but I believe at, at the cost of sounding too dramatic, I think this is life changing right here, this next concept. So if you, if you take just one thing away 
I think this is a huge deal. I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's life changing. Um, it's this. How many of you know this? 10, 10, 80? Kinda. This is huge. Again, I, I'm going to say it again. I think it's. I think it's life changing. If you do this, um, you're going to be different than the majority of not just college students or recent college graduates, but the majority of certainly the United States and the world. If you can set up your budget to follow the, the 10, 10, 80 principle, um, I would venture to say your financial life is going to go pretty well. It's not to say you're guaranteed just to sail through without any issues because that's not the way life works. But what this, what this says, you take your first, take your first 10 percent and you give it. You give it away. Right, because we remember from that first verse we shared, First Chronicles 29:11 says, "Everything is the Lord's; it's all His. It's 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 all His." So, as as followers of Christ, our our first responsibility is to acknowledge that we acknowledge that it's all the Lord's, and by by you know a, a, what's the word? A tangible expression of that acknowledgement is to give 10% of it away, and that's a tough deal because you know how hard you work. In class every day, you know, if any of you have jobs, you know it's it's tough when you're working a full-time job. When you get that paycheck finally, you your tendency is to want to do what? Like hold, hold on to that. You know how tough it is to come by those dollars. And so the first thing that you want to do to be financially successful is to give it away. Like you gotta be kidding me. You know, you want to hold on even tighter to that. But uh, there's some great scripture we could spend a lot of time that tells you the Lord's going to take care of you if you do that. So if you're able to give 10% away, um, and generally I tell people you're giving that to the place where you're, where you're getting your spiritual food. I mean, where, the, where you're really getting you know, you know, the spiritual uh, stuff that you need. And generally that's your, that's your local church. But again, it's giving it, giving it away, and giving 10%. And then the other 10% you are saving. You're saving. You're saving into some long-term, just out of my hands, not even worried about necessarily when I'm going to get those dollars, but I'm, I'm giving 10%, I'm saving 10%, and then what am I doing with the other 80? That's, can you believe it with all the graphics out there? That's the best one that I can come up with that shows people having a good time. Do you, do you get that from that? They're having a good time, right? right? You're living the dream. So there you go. I'm so... It shows how old I am. Um, so giving 10, saving 10, and then basing the rest of your, you know, your, your monthly expenses, the stuff that you're doing life with, off of 80%. And if you do that, again, you're going to be so different from everybody else, and you are going to be so well cared for. Um, again, it's not to say that you're still not going to have issues, but when issues come up, whether it's a short-term unemployment, whether you have car repairs that need to happen or whatever, whatever little life emergency that comes along, or maybe there's somebody else that didn't do this, and this is where this gets to become really cool, is that you can bless somebody else with the dollars that you've set aside. You can bless them by giving them those dollars. And there's not a greater joy in the world than being able to give to other people in that case, right? And I'm not saying you're you're saving just to give, give those away, but it's amazing how the Lord will um, create those opportunities in your life for you to be able to bless other people. So, if you're able to do that, good stuff happens. Chris, I have a question. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I just wanted to testify to that because um, for my husband and I, it's been our habit to even just save 10% of our Christmas money and of our tax return, you know, like any money that's coming into ours, you know, like 10% of it is the Lord's. And it's amazing that God already has a plan of who that money's going to, because like the second we get it, sometimes it's eerily strange how that amount matches up with a need that we've heard of. And so just like, we just see it as we've made ourselves available to allow God to work in our lives and in someone else's. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's, and then it's been so easy to be faithful because we've seen how that has affected others. And being able, it's really not ours, it's just like we're just available to the Lord and it's a joy. So. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. that, that's really cool. 
it's hard to do at first. Yeah, if you start to you make... start yeah, you start to think about it. Because mm -hmm. when you start making an income, you know, you start making an income to think about giving ten percent of that, it just you're like, Oh my goodness, you wanna almost hold on tighter, you're like, I can't I, I need this. Money. I need right, right. <laughs> but it's amazing how it, it, yeah, and again you go if if you look at scripture there's there's so many fantastic verses that promise promise that the Lord is going to care for you in a situation like that. It really is amazing. Is there somebody? Nobody else? Okay. Um, there's some great tools. There's, there's really, if you, if you want to get a handle on what a budget should look like, I would encourage you to go to this site, Crown Financial. That's not who I'm with, but I think they do as good a job as anybody else. And they've got this uh, at engage.crown.org slash MLI. I think that stands, I think it's money life indicator. I think that's right. It'll allow you to plug in if you're not employed right now, if you're full-time students, you can kind of fudge this and maybe I think a cool exercise is to kind of do a little bit of homework and figure out what, what kind of income am I going to be, what can I expect to get when I graduate from the career that I have? You know, if you expect to earn $50,000, you can plug that in and you can see exactly what is appropriate. How do I allocate those? that 80% of my money. What, how much do I have to spend on a home? How much do I have to spend on a car? It's really a pretty cool, pretty cool tool to use. So I think if you're, if you're wanting to get into what a budget looks like, that's as good a place as any. And then the, uh, one of the companies that I'm with, Guidestream Financial, just down the street, this is our website, and we've got a lot of great calculators there too that are very practical, everyday kind of things that say, does it make sense to um, pay off my home early, how much do I need to save to get me to this goal five years from now. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of making up some stuff here, but there's all kinds of great calculators there too. There's some great, great online resources that, and again, all come from a biblical perspective on how to manage money there too, which is a huge deal. There's a lot of financial people you talk to, I'll get you one second, okay? A lot of financial people completely neglect that first 10%, and they will tell you, you are nuts, you're crazy. Why would you ever give away 10%? It just doesn't make sense in a financial plan that you would do that. But again, we're, we're called to be different as Christians. We're set aside, we're, we're different, and we manage our affairs in a way that's different. Um, so, yeah. Um, as far as the saving, the 10%, does that have to do with investments as well? Like if you invest in like bonds or like the stock market and stuff, or does that have to do with the 80%? No, I would say that that's that's a big part of it. And you can get, I mean, we could spend a lot of time just going into that, but I think it's saving it in something that is, and I'll show you here in just a second. You're so good. You're so good. You are leaving me right where I'm going to go here. Um, and tell me if we don't hit on this, we will, we'll, we'll make sure we get there, okay? Um, here's the key, real, real quick, with budgeting, discipline's a key. Again, adults, adults are disciplined, adults are willing to follow a plan. And you have to realize that building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. And a lot of people will tell you today, again, because of the way the market's been the last couple couple months, you can just blindly put money in, and you're, you know, people are making a lot of money here. But now we've seen over what's happened to the market over, over the last few days. Anybody have any idea? Just gone, just crud, right? So all the money that was just made, you know, so that that's what happens with the market. So a lot of people thought, man, this is really simple, but the reality is, is no matter what happens, who's president, what the market's doing, what else is happening in the world, um, building wealth really is a long-term deal. And Hebrews had, this is a great, great scripture. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produced the harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. All right, here's, I'm gonna get you, I don't know if this is right for where we're going here. Um, hundred dollars a month, and that for some of you is maybe a pretty simple thing to do if you've got a job. For some of you, you're like, man, I can't even buy Easy Mac. I'm so glad to have dinner tonight. I don't have enough cash to even take care of dinner tonight. But if you're able to scrape together a hundred dollars a month, and I use twenty-five to sixty-five, and we'll look at a couple different scenarios here. And this is this is unrealistic what I'm showing you here, but I want to give you just the idea the concept of this. So if you're able to start at age 25, setting aside $100 a month, and you just diligently work that into your plan, right, and this could be part of that 10%, this is the part that's unrealistic in a lot of ways. Um, 
you know, eight to 10% is maybe a little more realistic and that would be investing in some mutual fund stock portfolio, something like that, maybe a little out of the, um, where we're at for this, for this class. But the whole concept I wanted you to see is if you're able to systematically save and without question or without any distraction, right, without being distracted by the, the shiny thing out there, just sticking to the plan, again, it's not, not really magic, it's just the math works. You're going to be a millionaire when you retire. Okay, if you're able to save a little bit more early on, it, it's, it's just incredible what happens. The math just, it, it has to work. So if you want to be a millionaire, you don't do it overnight, but if you're willing to set aside those dollars today and just consistently do it, no matter what, it's going to happen. It just has to happen. Okay? But how many people are willing to do this now? You'd be amazed. So few people are willing to do that because that, that money can go towards a car payment, it goes towards a house payment, it goes towards, not that you don't want to go out with your boyfriend or girlfriend, but man, boyfriends and girlfriends are expensive, mm -hmm. you know? Again, I'm not saying don't date, that's, a, that's an okay thing, but you know, it's amazing what $100, you, you'll find a reason to not save that $100 a month. I love this, and this is kind of where I want to kind of hover here and close with this, and then hopefully you have some questions we can go through. Um, I don't know if you can see this in the back. I can hardly see it from up here, but what I wanted to show you, um, and again, it's, it's similar, similar, um, similar returns. Again, the concept is awesome. It's really cool. So you got two different investors. I think I'll just look through here. You got Ben on the left that when he was 19, are there any 19 year olds here? Gotta be somebody. Yeah, oh baby, there we go. Yeah, this is you. Fill in your name here. You're not Ben, but you are Alexis. Alexis, if you start, again, maybe just tough to do, but if you take $2,000, that's what we're demonstrating here. At age 19, you invest $2,000, and we're assuming, I think it's just over 10%, I, if, I, if I remember right. That $2,000 earns 10%-ish. 10, 10 um, and then you do that same thing next year. Somehow you find $2,000 when you're age 20 and you invest that in the same investment and you continue to do that through 26, through age 26. So for eight years, you've invested $2,000, $16,000 of your own money, and then you just stopped. You just said, I am done. I'm not investing anymore. I'm living my life, okay? So that's, that's that scenario. And then you've got another person who, who, who at 19 said, I can't invest, I don't have the money to invest and I'm graduating and I'm gonna, I'm getting married and I, you know, all the stuff, all the stuff. But now finally at 27, they get their act together and they start investing $2,000, right? At the, the year after you quit investing, they begin and they invest over those years. They invest for the next 38 years, which is most people. Right? That's most people. Most people begin and once they start, they don't stop until they until they retire. So he invests, Arthur, we got Ben and Arthur, um, for 38 years he invests $2,000. He invests of his own money $76,000. And that's the cool part. You guys can see this. At the bottom, the total return for the person, for Alexis, that started investing when she was 19, she's got $2.3 million. And, and this guy didn't do too shabby himself but only got up to a million and a half dollars and had to invest all those years. And here you are putting money aside early and you're better off. This person can never catch up if they invest the same amount of money. So there's so much benefit to starting now. And I don't know what the reality is that a 19 year old can, can do that. But man, if you're, again, I know so many of you are working your butts off during the summer just to be able to pay you know, so you don't have to have student, student loans and those kinds of things. But if you can find it in your budget now, if you can find it, just some amount of money, whatever it is, even if it's not that $2,000, whatever you can save now and invest for the long term, again, without the distractions of saying, I'm gonna use this for a car, or use this for a house, but I'm just gonna save it for savings purposes. It's incredible, it's incredible what you're gonna have later on in life. It's amazing.
Yeah, it's the magic of compound interest. It just, you, it's amazing. The more the money, more money you can get invested up front, um, it's just this beautiful thing that happens later on in life. Any thoughts on that? Isn't that cool? <coughs> Maybe except for the names. We've got to change the names up there. And I'm going to leave. Is that how you guys feel right now? That's how you feel a little overloaded? If you do, we've got, and I, I this is not a commercial for my organization, um, but I'll tell you, we've, I've, I've shared this a couple times with a couple different classes like this, and um, in, in the, I think, three years, I've talked with two students after they've graduated, two out of, I don't know what the percentages are, and those two are set on an amazing course for success. And we've got a fantastic team of people. If some of this stuff, you're like, man, I think this makes some sense, but I don't quite know how to do it. We've got a great team of people that can help you implement some of these things. Um, and those two people that have come are, like I said, they're set on a course that's completely different. I would venture to, not that I, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but I know for sure that these two, one's recently married, and, and they're just doing, they're doing some cool stuff. And if I told you who he was, I can almost guarantee each one of you would know who he is. Think of the most awesome person you know, and that's who it is. <laughs> he, he is. He's a great guy. Great guy. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're willing to do those things that nobody else is willing to do, you're going to be able to live later on like nobody else. Um, there's a couple more, couple more of our websites. Um, but m I would say this, does anybody, for the last few minutes that we have here, does anybody have any questions or anything that you want to go back through or something that's not quite, we didn't quite get to? Anybody have any thoughts? All right. Yeah. Maybe just for their sake, like, would, would you have a recommendation of paying student loan? Like, do you have a strategy? You know, is it do it fast or like move home? Put everything you have into it, or do you take more time? Um, so, what would your yeah? Answer be? That's a that's a great question. I think it comes out of your plan. You know, what do I want to accomplish? For for some people, there's this peace of mind that comes with knowing I don't have any debt, and they want to work their butt off to eliminate debt as soon as possible. Just because it, you know, it's almost like this this weight that's kind of taken off of your shoulders. But I would say the reality, if you just look at dollars and cents wise, most student loans, the interest rate that you're paying on that debt is a lot lower. And again, this is kind of a blanket statement that may not work for everybody because every loan's a little bit different, every situation is different. But more times than not, you can find an investment that's gonna be earned or has the potential to earn more than what you're paying in student loan interest. So if you just look at dollars and cents wise, probably you're better off taking some of those dollars and being like those folks we just saw here, investing some of that early. But I think it, there's probably a balance there too. And there's somebody like my niece was a person who said, I don't care if financially it makes sense. I just don't like knowing I have this payment every month. I just want to get rid of it and it just makes me feel, just feels good for me. You know, and I think that's something you, you pray about and you really, as you just, you're kind of led one direction or another, but I hope that helps. Financially, a lot of times it makes sense to invest, um, and we tell that to people kind of going a step further with home mortgages. Oftentimes, if they've got a great uh, interest rate, it makes more sense to invest those dollars. You're going to earn more than you would by paying off that lower rate mortgage. But there's some people who say, I don't care. I just don't like it, and I want to get rid of it soon. So I think it really comes from having a plan, having a plan and knowing what your other goals are and kind of starting with your, your end goal in mind and then kind of working with somebody to work backwards and figure out what the best strategy is to, to get you to that. You know, some people would say, I'm making this up now too, some people would say, I don't want to work after college. I know my spouse has a job and I don't need to work, so my goal is to pay this debt off today. I want to get it done and I want to get it gone and that's, that's the goal. So if that's the goal, then follow that and pursue that. This is a good Dave Ramsey-ism. He always says, pursue your goal. And he says, actually, pursue eliminating debt with gazelle-like intensity. 
right? Have you guys ever watched like uh, Discovery Channel or some Animal Planet or something like that, where the cheetahs are chasing the gazelles? All right, you've seen that, right? I'm not the only person, I'm the only nerd that watches that, right? All right, you guys have seen that. Um, when those gazelles start running, how do they how do they get away from that cheetah? They, they are flying, right? I mean, their life depends on whether or not they can outrun the cheetah. They are moving. And so Dave Ramsey would tell you, eliminate that debt or pers I would say pursue your goal with gazelle-like intensity. Like there's nothing else that matters. It does, he, the gazelle is not distracted by shiny things. He's distracted by nothing. He is just focused on getting away from the cheetah. And that's really the way you guys, if you pursue whatever your goals are like that, you're going to absolutely be successful. Gazelle's running all over the place. It would be awesome to see it. <laughs> okay. All right, how about, Chad, do you want to end us here, or can I, anything that we need to? No, just please fill out your green sheet. Thank Chris for his time, and if you have any further questions. Okay. How about this, real quick, before you just give me an awesome standing ovation. <laughs> Not that I'm asking for that, but I mean, if you feel led to do that, it's okay. How about this, how about I say a quick word of prayer for you guys, and then um, I'll let you jump out in the snow. All right, Lord, thank you for this fantastic uh, group of young people. Um, an incredible amount of potential that you've given each one of them and, and their lives. And I just pray, Lord, that you lead them in a direction that would be pleasing to you and help them with whatever decisions need to be made, um, some of them sooner than, than others. In the next six months here for some of them, others a couple more years, Lord. I just, just pray today that you lead them in the right way and that you nudge them uh, through your Holy Spirit to do the things that are pleasing to you and that they will surround themselves with other people who will support them in those decisions that, and, uh, and um, ultimately, Lord, keep, keep our eyes on the fact and the, the truth that all of what you've given us is yours and we want to simply manage that for, the, for your glory, Lord. So thank you again for this time and for each person here. And just ask a special blessing on each one of them today. In your name we pray. Amen.